Hi, I'm Krishna and I'm a language lover. Today I would like to start a series of videos about how to create a phonological system. That's if you're a language inventor and you want to create sounds, phonemes for your language, how do you do this? And I would like to get you through this process and also if you're just interested in languages and you would like to know yeah what kind of sounds are in a language and how are they combined you can also watch this video and probably also get some ideas and some insights about yeah how sounds are combined together in a language and how they produce words and a language so when you try to develop a language, you might want to start with the phonological system. So, uh, if, what is a phonological system? A phonological system is a collection of all the sounds that occur in your language, which is also called a phoneme inventory. So it's an inventory of all the phonemes, of all the sounds that make words distinguishable in your language and these sounds or phonemes are combined to create syllables and later full words this is called phonotactics and phonotactics gives you the rules to combine different sounds into syllables and then into full words how to design a phonological system let's start with the phonemes, all the possible sounds in a language that are distinguishable are called phonemes. That comes from ancient Greek. Phonos means sound and a phoneme is uh, a piece of sound in a language. For example, English has those phonemes here. You see they are always written within brackets. That means they are phonemes, they are distinguishable elements in a language. I will read these aloud. There's a t, ch, h, f, n, ng, i, e, i, o, and many more phonemes. <laughs> Sometimes one phoneme has more than one possible phone. So a phoneme in a language can have different pronunciations different phones depending on where in a syllable or in a word it appears. I've given an example here of the velar stop, usually we'll call it a K in uh, or written with a K or a C, uh, but probably many don't know that English has two possible pronunciations of K depending on where the K appears. It has an aspirated form that means it has a H directly after the K and an unaspirated without the H sound. You see two examples. One is the word cool. The other word is the word school. First you have the phonemic writing in brackets and then you have the phonetic uh, writing which more precisely shows which sounds are actually produced. So the word cool is actually composed of three phonemes k, u and l and pronounced cool. The word school is pronounced of the phonemes s, k, u and l and pronounced school. What is the difference between the first k here and the second k here? The first k is aspirated. Um, the second one in school is not aspirated. There is a push of air coming out after cool but not after the K in school. You can feel this difference when you put your hand in front of your mouth and clearly slowly produce the words cool and school. Cool and school. K with cool you feel like a, a blow of air. With school you don't feel this blow of air after K. I already mentioned the word phoneme inventory. A phoneme inventory is a collection of all the phonemes of a given language. 
it is usually shown in two tables. One is the table for vowels and the other one is the table for consonants. With most languages, the exact amount of phonemes can be debatable. So sometimes there's um, phonemes that only appear in certain words, in foreign words or in certain dialects. So the exact number of phonemes in language is usually hard to tell. I've given you two tables as an example to just get the impression what a phoneme inventory looks like. Here on the left you have the vowel inventory, that's a very easy vowel inventory of five vowels. And then you have the consonants here, this is like a medium sized consonant inventory. I will later go further into these details. Phoneme inventories come in different sizes. Here uh, on the top you see a small consonant inventory and a small vowel inventory. I'm just going to read them to you shortly. P, T, K, S, N, L. That's really like a very small consonant inventory. And the vowel inventory here is E, A, U. Three vowels has to be enough. There are languages that actually have such small inventories. Um, here below you see much bigger inventories, a big consonant inventory and a big vowel inventory. I'm also going to read them aloud so you get an impression what they represent. P, B, F, V, M, W, T, D, F, V, N, L, C, Z, S, Z, R, Ch, J, Sh, J, N, Y, K, G, H, R, N, R, H. That's a phoneme inventory of 30 consonants, if I count it correctly. Then the vowel inventory, E, 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 A, U, 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 E, U, O, U, O, O. Some people say that they have problems hearing the differences between these different inventories and yes if you're not used to hearing those sounds then it might at first be difficult but with time and with exercise you can learn to differentiate these different phonemes. For the sake of this uh, video of these videos uh, about how to produce a phonological system I've actually developed four different uh, invented languages or invented phonological systems to just give a good example of what I'm actually talking about. So you will see four different constructed phonological systems ordered by size and complexity. So the first system I'm going to introduce here in this video is a very easy and small system and the further the video goes the more the bigger the phonemic inventories become and the bigger also the, um, the the complexity of the different syllables becomes so you will always have one consonant consonant inventory one vowel inventory with the vowels then the phonotactics these are the rules how to produce syllables and words and a text example to get an idea what words in that invented or fictional language would sound like. Let's start with the first phonological system. It's a very easy system. Um, first you will you see the six consonants in the consonant inventory. Um, how is this table uh, constructed? On the top you see the places of articulation. So what do the what does the tongue and the lips do? So labial means the sound is produced with the lips. Coronal means the sound is produced somewhere in the middle of the mouth with your tongue. And vela means more in the back, in the velum, that's the softer part in the back of your mouth. Then the uh, lines here show what uh, kind of phoneme we are producing is stop is a short explosive sound. Fricative is a sound where the air brushes through your uh, mouth and your teeth and your lips. Nasal means 
the sound comes out through the nose and lateral means it's produced with a tongue on the sides. I'm going to present these six consonants to you. First we have the labial stop pa, pa, a pa, up. So I always present these sounds uh, first followed by an a, ah, then um, in the middle between two a's ah, and then at the end of a syllable. Then we have the coronal sounds. First the coronal stop ta, atta, at. Then the s, coronal fricative sa, asa, as. Then the nasal, coronal nasal sound na, ana, an. And then the coronal lateral la, ala, al. And finally the velar stop. The k that we already saw in cool and school. Um, ka, a ka, ak. So this is a really basic, easy, small consonant system, but it's a realistic for a realistic example of a consonant inventory. Let's have a look at a very easy vowel inventory. I've chosen the three most basic vowels I could find. There are actually languages in the world that have a similar system to this one. Uh, for example, Arabic uh, or Quechua spoken in South America in different dialects or even languages. Uh, here you have the table. First you have the front vowels the front high front vowel is e and the central low vowel would be a ah, and the back high vowel would be u usually if you have such a small vowel inventory each vowel phoneme will have different possibilities of pronunciation depending on which other sounds are surrounding it so perhaps an e could also become more like an e or more like an u depending on where it is, and the a ah might become more of an a ah, or more of an a ah, or even an a, uh, depending where it appears. After seeing the consonant inventory and the vowel inventory, let's now have a look at the phonotactics. See, these are the rules, how to produce syllables and nouns. Let's have the very simple rule here. A syllable is composed of a C, a V and potentially a N at the end. That means a syllable first has a consonant sound, then a vowel sound and might be followed by an N. Examples would be of, of syllables that can be produced by these phonotactic rules is P, TA, KUN, SA, LU and NIN. You always see the first sound or the first phoneme is a consonant, the second one is a vowel, one of the three vowels, and there might be a n at the end of a syllable. The next rule we introduce is the rule for uh, producing a word, and the rule is very easy in this case. Each word is composed of one or more than one syllable. So possible words Following these rules would be na, lin, suli, kinta, patun, kitali, santi kupinsa, tikula pasinno, and so on. Let's spice things up a little and add to pronunci pronunciation rules. Pronunciation rules um, are like rules, additional rules in a phonological system that make things usually more easy to pronounce. I decided for two rules. There's one is a voicing of stops. The other one is a nasal assimilation. Those are both um, uh, things that happen quite often in languages. The first one says between two vowels, a voiceless stop becomes voiced. So a uh, voiceless p would become a b, a t becomes a d, and k becomes a g, always between vowels. You can also show this with a formula, vowel, 
than voiceless consonant vowel. So voiceless shows that this consonant is actually a voiceless consonant, transforms following the rule into a voiced consonant. So vowel, voiced consonant, vowel. Examples would be the phonemic word tupi would become tubi, satu becomes sadu, kilutapani becomes kiludabani, and panpatikuta becomes pambadiguda. Nasal assimilation is a thing that appears in many, many languages. It means that if a n sound appears before a p or a bare label sound, the n, the voisal, uh, the nasal sound becomes bilabial. So they become similar, more similar to each other, these sounds. And the n becomes a ng. So again, n before p becomes assimilated to m, and n before k becomes assimilated to ng. Examples would be Sanpu becomes Sambu, Kinpa becomes Kimba, Linka becomes Linga, and Punkita becomes Pungida. So if you listen, they are more easy to pronounce. Let's come to the sample text. I produced a small sample text. It's within brackets, so this is the phonemic version of it. The phonetic one within these squared brackets is actually the phonetic one that means the one how you, it would actually be pronounced by the speakers of this fictional language. I'm going to read this aloud and perhaps you can follow me looking above so you see the phonemic um, version and you hear the phonetic version. Mi Tanu Kalinda Pasila Kundugani Minda Kasalin Pusugi Natolansa Nisi Patangisala Mibundi Sila Tagisi Salanin Natungambi Punga Namasini. Notice that these words don't really have a meaning yet. You might give them some meaning. But I produced those words mainly for the purpose of showing you how languages produce syllables and words. And I hope you enjoy the sound of this language. I actually found it quite pleasant. Yes, thanks for following this video. In the next one, you're going to get to know an easy system, which has a, a bit of a bigger consonant and vowel uh, inventory, and also some bit more complex phonological rules.